Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to DIY guitar making here at Eric Schaefer Guitars. In my shop today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain why a cutaway makes your acoustic instrument, all other things being equal, sound brighter. All right, so let's check that out. Okay, so I've got two very different guitars here. Obviously, this is a non-cutaway, and this is a cutaway. Uh, to be specific, this is a Florentine cutaway. When you think Florentine cutaway, just think pointy cutaway, okay? The other type of cutaway, which is a little bit more common, especially in the commercial manufactured world of guitars is the Venetian cutaway, which makes your guitar look a little bit like a baseball mitt, right? It's the rounded cutaway. So first of all, at the end of this video, I will not be playing these instruments back to back so you can hear the difference. You don't need to put on your hi-fi headphones and listen in like that. This is not that kind of video. As you can see, there are many things like this wacky bridge that are radically different. This is a redwood top. This is a western red cedar top. These guitars are simply not the same. They're different scale lengths even. I'm just using them as props to describe the difference between the cutaway and the non-cutaway. There are plenty of videos out there that do a you know back-to-back -back listening hi-fi headphone kind of thing. Uh, we don't need to have another one here. So this is the explanation of why. All right, so first, a little bit of fundamentals here. With any acoustic instrument, you have an energy budget that we're trying to keep track of here. So you can almost think of this as like a pie chart. Anything you want to do, you want to you know, boost the trebles or boost the bass or the mids or whatever, you have to take from somewhere else, okay? You can't just keep growing that pie. You actually have to steal from one section of it uh, to get more in another area and then hopefully you have an instrument that has used its energy budget wisely or at least in a way that is pleasant to you, the player. So there are two reasons why the cutaway makes the guitar sound brighter. One, the volume of trapped air in the sound box is decreased, that you can obviously see. And two, the top itself is stiffened by the shape of the cutaway, which we'll get into and we'll talk about. So there is a relationship between the volume of trapped air that we have in our sound box and the size of our sound hole. And that relationship determines basically the pitch of the, uh, the air that's coming out of the sound hole or the sound waves, I should say, not the air. And uh, this is very readily understood when you play something like a flute, right? It has those many holes that you block with your fingers. Those holes on the flute, the ones that aren't being blocked by your fingers, can be likened to the sound hole, right? So the size of that hole matters, and there's a certain volume inside the flute that is being blown out that hole. This concept is called the Helmholtz resonance. And you know what? Let me see if I can demonstrate this uh, for a minute for you. Let me go grab a bottle of something. All right, so this is a bottle of True Oil, actually, that I mixed up because I'm in the middle of finishing uh, one of my instruments. I'm not pointing at this parlor guitar right here. There's actually another instrument behind it way back there in the finishing room that I'm working on. So you will not see me drinking this, even though it looks like it's just some very dirty Aquafina water right there. Or it looks like uh, a bottle of rum that someone would sneak into a concert, right? When you're 15. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I never did that when I was 15. So what, I'm, what I am going to demonstrate for you is the fact that there's a certain volume within this bottle, which is determined by how much space is left over above the uh, the volume of water here, right? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blow across the top here, just like, you know, if you've ever blown on a glass bottle, you get a nice uh, tone out of it. This is a plastic bottle, so it won't be that nice, but 
it'll work. And so then I'll pour a little bit of this out and I'll blow on it again. And what we should hear, once I pour a little of this out, I will have increased the size of my uh, air cavity, right? So I should get a deeper, uh, more bass in that tone. Makes sense, right? Because the sound hole stays the same, right? That's not being changed at all. All right, let's try it out. Oop, I whistled, that was me. There it is. Okay, let's pour a little bit out. Okay. Let's pour a little more out. See if it goes even deeper. I think it's too deep. I can't even get a tone out of it anymore. Maybe I'm just bad at this. I can't find the angle. Anyway, <laughs> you heard it the first time. All right, let's pour this back in. Okay, so that is the first reason. That's Helmholtz resonance. That, I believe, is the primary reason why your guitar sounds brighter. The next thing we're going to talk about is Mm, a secondary effect. It's just not as strong, but it is important to understand. And that's the fact that the top and the upper bout should be stiffer on a cutaway than it is on a non-cutaway. Why is that? So you can think of the top and the back to some extent, but we're not talking about the back here. Um, but let's, let's just focus on the top. You can think of the top like a resonant membrane that vibrates and the greater the stiffness, the higher the frequencies that it's creating, okay? Stiffness creates higher frequencies. And so all of your bracing, that bracing pattern that you have on there that you can't see right now, but actually if I pull this over, here we go, now we can see something. All of this is stiffening up the top. And in a positive way, we want it to stiffen up the top. Now what also stiffens up the top is the bridge, uh, the fretboard to some extent, and one thing that's easily overlooked, uh, even by luthiers sometimes, is the fact that the stiffest brace, so to speak, that we have on here is the perimeter itself, right? And so by creating this cutaway, we give a certain section of the sides a very sharp bend. In fact, this is now the sharpest bend, sharper than the waist even. And the waist is a pretty sharp bend. Now, the more curve you have in the side, the stiffer that that side will be. I can actually feel that if I press on the side, that this, the inside of the cutaway, which was cut to the same thickness, actually feels very firm. Whereas if I go to one of these um, softer, gentler curves over here, there's a little bit of give, just a little bit, not much, but just a little bit when I push down on those sides, whereas this feels very firm. So a tight bend actually creates a little extra stiffness in and of itself. Furthermore, this side right here is very close to this side. Okay, now just to use an analogy here, let's imagine we had a very long bridge crossing a wide span and a very short bridge crossing a very short span. Which one needs to be stronger? That long, uh, you know, think the Golden Gate Bridge. That very long bridge uh, needs a lot more support because it has a greater span to cross. Um, we get a lot of support from these two perimeters here, which are really close together. So the top in this area, go ahead and push on this, is super stiff, okay? Now if I go over here and push on this side, I can actually feel it's not much, but I can actually feel a little bit of give. If I push over here, by the way, you can feel a lot of give because that's supposed to be very loose. This is, um, this is where you're, where you, when you first 
pluck your string and put your energy into the system, this is where it begins. So this is very loose and able to move and resonant. Uh, definitely gets stiffer up here. Because in the upper bout, let's take a look at this, you have the transverse bar, which is the largest member in this whole bracing pattern right here. Uh, this is a very common pattern, by the way. This is just your standard Martin X-Brace pattern. On a cutaway, all we've done to this pattern, here I've got my bending shoe right here. I could use this to kind of demonstrate. All we've done is we've taken a chunk out like this. The bracing pattern is essentially the same. This transverse bar just comes over and meets the curve of our cutaway just like that. And so we really haven't changed anything with the bracing pattern. We've just put this shape into it, okay? Now this part of the top is mostly acoustically inert anyway because of the transverse bar. The transverse bar is actually meant to create a firm barrier, like a stopping point for your vibrational footprint, which is actually this part of the top. Okay, your vibrational footprint ends right here at the transverse bar. That, I know there's a long-winded answer here to this, this part of the explanation, but that right here, the fact that this part of the upper bout is acoustically inert, that is why I don't think this effect is very strong, although it, I do think it does exist, okay? It, it should get factored into it. But... Like I said, the main thing, if you only take one thing away from this, I would take that Helmholtz resonance uh, aspect of it away from this. That's a, pr a pretty big deal that we've taken a chunk out of it. Now, when I say a pretty big deal, by the way, um, this is not make or break it, like you're gonna have a radically, you know, poppy sounding uh, high frequency guitar when you do a cutaway. You could actually have a cutaway that sounds, has more bass response than a, another non-cutaway that you own. There's just so many factors that go into this that um, the cutaway itself is not the greatest factor that's going to determine that, right? I'm just answering the question of how it affects the bass line. If you have a bass line of a guitar built a very particular way and you give it a cutaway, that's the type of change that you should expect. Now lastly, one thing that I want to say is that it's actually kind of a happy accident that the cutaway gives us more of those higher frequency tones because when we create a cutaway, why are we doing that? Like, what are we actually trying to get out of it? And the obvious easy answer is we want, or the player wants, to be able to reach these upper registers, which sound very, you guessed it, trebly, right? They're supposed to be, these are the high notes. And so if you think about it, if you're building a cutaway guitar, which you're essentially, you sh you're supposed to be building that for the type of player that actually plays in these upper registers. Now, if you're playing these high notes here, you probably don't mind or even desire the guitar to be accentuating the trebles. So that's kind of a, a cool little happy accident there. Um, but also keep that in mind because I guess from a consumer perspective, if you're someone buying a guitar, if you don't play up here, don't get a cutaway. Or if you play up there very minimally, still don't get a cutaway, get a non-cutaway. You'll be optimized for where you do play, which is usually, you know, uh, people who don't play up in those upper registers usually play up to like the seventh fret, right? And then don't go much beyond there, um, especially if you're just playing cowboy chords and stuff like that. You're a folk songwriter. Um, so yeah, if you don't need the cutaway, don't get it. I know there's often, uh, the cutaway is often thought of in the consumer guitar market world. It's often thought of as just an extra feature, like if you can afford it, you should get it, but it's really not. Don't, don't look at it that way. Get it if your playing style fits. Okay guys. That's all I got in me. I hope you guys got something out of that. And um, yeah, I'm going to go uh, put some more true oil on that guitar. See you guys later. Bye for now. 
If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.